Yep, thanks for the message. And obviously I'd love to go for coffees with everyone. I'm actually a big coffee fan, black as it comes, black as my heart, as they say. The problem is if I was meeting everyone that sent me a message for coffee, I'd never ever be leaving Starbucks. So I'll try and help everyone as much as I can with TikTok videos. Now, this is more specifically about working with investors and potential JV partners. Now, obviously, I'm a huge fan of this strategy because this is how I got started. This is how I built my entire business. I came from no money, I never had a handout, and eventually, after I ran out of my own money, which I just got from buying properties when you could get a 100% mortgage, I had no choice but to share my deals with investors. But narrow-mindedly did I think that this was a bad decision and I had to do it, but what it actually did was open up my whole world to buy in every deal that I ever had come across my desk. And I can categorically tell you now, the first couple of JVs I did in 2014, I then developed it into a brand, I named it after my children, and then in 2015, I went on to buy 37 houses, all of them pretty much student houses with joint venture partners. Now I did this for years, every year it grew and grew, 37, 60, 7.8, 8 million pound in property year after year, it was just absolutely crazy. But I learned some very quick, big lessons. And that is, you should not just jump into joint ventures or working with investors without taking proper legal advice. And when I say proper, that is the capital P in adverters underlined word that you should take note of because I actually engaged my local lawyers on giving me advice. And because they weren't specialists, they gave me the wrong advice. I ended up going to a specific lawyer who deals with FCA money raising. He actually writes terms and conditions for crowdfunding platforms. This is how knowledgeable this guy is. And I ended up also getting a barrister involved. Now, there are some key fundamental things that you should watch out for, but this may be a bit out of date now because I haven't done joint ventures for years, but keep one deal to one investor. Never ever pull one deal to multiple investors. It's called pool and investment, FCA regulatory stuff, and you have to meet and tick a hell of a lot of boxes. Also, never charge fees for joint ventures. Make your money out of the deal. Be commercially aligned to the investor's return. That means there's never a conflict. If you sell deals or you do a deal on a management charge and there's something goes wrong with the deal, you still get your fee. It's fundamentally and morally wrong. Joint venture partners should come in, one person brings the money, the other brings the experience, the time, the know-how, and the ability to deliver. And you should only be paid when you deliver. The other way of raising funds is on fixed rate of return. This is much more simple, and you can do this with much less headache and much less paperwork. And I personally prefer this because when a deal goes wrong, even in joint venture circumstances, you might have plan A, B, C's and D's, but legislation can change, market can change, or there might be new opportunities. You need to be able to move quickly and shift the direction. When you've got a joint venture partner, there's much more at stake. And if you're in it equally, you need to run everything by the JV partner. And sometimes the conflict of the inexperience of the JV partner, the whole reason why they were doing the deal with you, can mean that you fundamentally disagree. I can tell you now, I had an investor, really lovely lady, we'd done multiple deals. She'd actually even posted about me in my defense on how successful our deals were. But when Donald Trump came into power, she panicked and she wanted to sell what was effectively a gold mine student house. I said we needed to hold on because they are going to go up literally by another 30% in six months. But she didn't listen and she wanted to sell. And we ended up selling, it was a five bed, five en suite student house with the potential to build on the side for about 290,000. That was only about four years ago. Today, those properties are worth about 450. People would pay 300 for it before any refurbishment. So know what you're doing and know who you're getting into bed with. Equally, just because an investor wants to work with you doesn't mean you should take the money and agree the deal. Some investors want to do the deal with you, but they become time vampires. They suck your time like a vampire. 
The other ones that I often find is that they want to be your best friend. They think because they're doing a business transaction with you that they they are owed your time as, and your friendship, which isn't always the case. Don't get me wrong, it's great to be friends and it's great to get on with people. But at the same time, when you are dealing with dozens of investors, you can't afford to go and spend time every day paying lip service, drinking tea with these investors who literally add no value to your time. So multiple things need to be considered. I hate preaching about not jumping in and ready, fire, then aim. But when it comes to working with investors, you need to have all of your ducks in a row.